Let me begin with a Bible verse from Psalm 25, verse 14. It says, The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. You know, the Bible is full of plain language messages, but it's also full of secret codes. The typology of the Old Testament has to uh, be cracked. The uh, the seeming contradiction between Old Testament prophecies and how they would be fulfilled, that, for example, Jesus would be born in Bethlehem or that he would be called a Nazarene or that he would come out of Egypt. There are many such seemingly contradictory prophecies that have to be unlocked. And then, of course, Christ's parables. He made it quite clear that the reason he was telling parables was not to make everything clear, but to actually hide the truth from people who weren't serious and to reveal it to those who were. So the Holy Spirit is the great code breaker. And the psalmist here tells us the secret. If you want to understand the, the wonderful mysteries in God's word that are hidden from the wise and prudent, but revealed to babes, the secret of cracking the secrets is the fear of the Lord. That is to take God seriously about everything. Not like, well, if he shows me this, I'll decide whether I believe it or not. We're not playing with a Rubik's Cube. We are to gladly receive the word, to embrace the truth. And that is the revelation of God. It's given to those who come as little babes, hungry for truth. And when we do, God reveals it to us. Now, I want to take you back to the First World War. The war started hostilities between Germany and Britain in 1914. By 1917, Britain was on the ropes, and they were desperate for help, and they wanted the United States to come in to the war. Now, the U.S. was providing some munitions, but they needed the American troops on the ground to help them. And Woodrow Wilson, U.S. president, had this strange sense of neutrality where he was providing a material, but uh, he didn't want to get involved in the war. And in actual fact, was allowing the Germans to send coded messages to the German ambassador in Washington. And um, the these coded messages that the Germans used, fairly unsophisticated, but not real easy to break. They were simply five and six digit numbers in strings, and um, the various numbers would stand for various subjects. And so there was this uh, special room called Room 40. MI8 had these brilliant young mathematicians, many of them college students, who would gather there and try to break the code of these messages that were being sent to various German uh, Germans around the world. And um, they had received some code books, and that had helped them a bit trying to figure out what some of these messages were. One day, they discovered that Arthur Zimmerman, who was the German foreign secretary, had sent a very lengthy message, coded message, to Count von Bernstorff, who was the German ambassador in Washington. And immediately they could pick up a few words. They were familiar with a few words. They saw it was in two parts. And as they began to decode it, and it was very difficult, word by word, they would discover what they were. But eventually they discovered that the Germans had decided that the way to break Britain's back was to have an all-out war of the German U-boats against all shipping in the Atlantic, including Americans, including people who were countries supposed to be neutral. They were going to destroy all the shipping, and with it, of course, the munitions that were being shipped to the Brits. And they knew that when this happened, the Americans would obviously be interested in coming into the war. So this coded message 
was informing the ambassador that their intention was to encourage the Mexicans to reclaim the land they had lost in Texas and New Mexico and Arizona to the United States. And by attacking the southern border, they would keep the Americans busy and keep them out of the European theater. That was the plan. Well, now they had a problem. If they decoded the message and sent the answer, the message to the United States president, then the Germans would know that they had broken that code. So what they had to do was find a similar coded message that actually went to Mexico and allow the Mexican message to come to the United States. And by doing this, they were able to shield how they had actually discovered the answer. And this is what brought the U.S. into the war. This is ultimately what led to the demise of the Germans. So, why does God put things in code? When we study the Bible, yes, the essential message of the Bible is plain and obvious. All have sinned. The soul that sins dies. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved, right? There are plain statements in the word of God that a fool need not err therein, says the Bible. The one who runs can read it. In other words, uh, this is a post-haste message. You can grab it on the run. You can understand what God is saying. However, there are great sections of the Bible that are locked up except to those who, like little children, come to the Lord in the fear of the Lord, that is, with a reverential awe for the God who reveals himself to us, because we can't know these things unless the Spirit reveals. And so says John, every believer has an unction from the Holy One, that is, an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things, he says. It doesn't mean that I personally know everything, but on a need-to-know basis, I can know everything God wants me to know. And I can do that by depending on the Holy Spirit, by fearing the Lord, by res respecting and honoring him, and being ready to obey him when he reveals it to me. And if that's the case, this will, this will become a way of life for me, the uncovering of the truth of God, the discoveries, the ongoing discoveries, the breaking of the code, that God has put in place. In fact, just before Jesus went away, he said that he was going to manifest himself to the believers, but not to the world. And Judas, not Iscariot, asked him this question, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus explained himself by the post-resurrection appearances. And what he was saying was, sometimes when you're studying the scriptures, as the two on the Emmaus Road were doing, I will manifest myself to you. Sometimes, when you're sorrowing, as with Mary Magdalene, I will manifest myself to you. Sometimes when you're serving me, laboring for me, fishing for souls, I will manifest myself to you. Sometimes, when you're doubting and questioning like Thomas, I will manifest myself to you. Sometimes when you need to be restored to fellowship, like Peter, I will manifest myself to you. Not every time you study the Bible or every time you're serving him, but now and again you will have this sense that the Savior has come and has manifested himself to us in the circumstances. So, God's people are code breakers. We've been given the secret to uncovering the truth of Scripture and uncovering the lessons of life. And we can do that if we fear the Lord, if we come as little babes asking the Lord to reveal his truth to us by his Holy Spirit.